Angel's Landing is probably the most iconic trail in Zion National Park and often voted one of the most dangerous hikes in the United States. The trail is not particularly long at only 4.5 miles round trip, but it gains over 1,500 feet of elevation to reach the summit with a good amount of that elevation at the end. Make no mistake, the last half mile of this trail is crazy and should not be taken lightly as people have died from falls in this section. You can hike all the way up to Scout's Overlook without any crazy sections, so you can stop there and get some great views. As you leave Scout's Overlook, you'll begin hiking up the side of the mountain to reach the summit. There are sections here with 1200 foot drops without even as much as a chain protecting you from the edge. It is a doable hike for many people, but is not one you should attempt if you're afraid of heights or are not prepared. Also, the trail now requires a permit in order to hike it, so be sure to grab one before you go. Alright, with all the disclaimers behind us, here's all the information on my last hike up Angel's Landing. We stayed in the town of Hurricane the night before and got up early to drive into the park. Parking is notoriously bad as the trail is so popular and there's not a lot of spots. During the summer they have a shuttle system that you'll have to take to get to the trailhead which alleviates parking, but during the rest of the year the shuttle isn't running so you will need to park. It's now 7.30 on a Monday and the parking lot is completely full. We are here, we are going up to the top of Angel's Landing, the dangerous trail. I did this trail in the middle of February, so I was prepared for any icy conditions with micro spikes. I had checked with the rangers previously to confirm there wasn't any ice on the dangerous portion of Angel's Landing, and I definitely wouldn't recommend doing it when there's any real ice in that section. It is a windy and cold morning on Angel's Landing. Be prepared for anything if you hike in the winter. There is the view of Angel's Landing right in front of us. That's what we're going to the top of. My dad had no desire to go to the top of Angel's Landing, which I definitely don't blame him for, but he still went along on the hike to go to Scout's Overlook. Starting our first set of switchbacks for the trail. First of many. You can see the switchbacks that we're gonna be going up through right there. If you need a break, this looks like a good bench tree. Starting in the early morning is amazing in Zion as you get to see the sun light up some of the surrounding mountains. See the people going up the switchbacks right there? That is our next stop. Now we're starting to gain some elevation. This trail has 1,500 feet of elevation, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's pretty steep elevation. When you go up, you go up. Oh man, look at that, good job. That deer definitely went off the trail. Oh yeah, he cut a switchback, what the heck. We started the parking area right there. We've came all the way up this trail and up these switchbacks. Continue that way. As you continue climbing, the views down into the valley are absolutely stunning. The switchbacks are paved, which makes the elevation a little easier instead of having to look out for loose rock. This section is steep. We're saying goodbye to the exterior portion and we are heading inland for a little bit. This trail is really straightforward and easy to follow. You can download an all trails map just to see where you're at, but you don't really need one. The section we're entering now is called the refrigerator because it's usually a lot colder with the wind coming through in the shade. We're entering a quiet zone. Mexican spotted owls live here. I was surprised by how many deer we saw on this trail. We saw probably a half dozen as we were hiking. They didn't even remotely care that we were there and they just kept eating while we were walking right alongside them on the trail. This section of the trail is the only part that's relatively shaded and flat. 
I'm sure this is a great part if you're hiking during the heat of the summer. We made it to the Walters Wiggle section, which is basically just 21 steep switchbacks all the way up to Scout's Overlook. While 21 switchbacks sounds like a lot, after the first few, they're actually really short. We're here in February, so there's a little bit of ice on the trail, but it hasn't snowed in a while, so that's the first thing we've seen. There's the rest of the switchbacks heading up right there. Look at those tiny, steep switchbacks. We are almost there, Pops. Like three more switchbacks. This section is fun and it has some great photo opportunities looking down on the switchbacks from above. We finished the Walters Wiggle section and we are heading in to the sun. There's the Summit of Angels Landing right there. Once you make it to the top, they do have actual bathrooms up here if you need to use them. We're a half mile from the Summit of Angels Landing. So, if you don't want to continue on, this is the Scouts Overlook area and it is definitely worth coming up to by itself. This is where we are saying bye to Pops, which I would normally give him some problems for this, but I would definitely never give anyone problems for Angel's Landing. The uh, next part is a little crazy. We'll see you in a little bit. Good to be here. Scouts Overlook is a worthy destination with great views and is a great turnaround point if you don't want to go all the way to the top. From here, the trail gets crazy, so there's lots of warnings about it. And definitely don't attempt if you're afraid of heights. 14 people have died climbing this. This is the start of the chain section. You'll be hugging the rock, but it gets crazy once you get to the top of here. This first chain section is a great introduction to what you're gonna be experiencing if you continue on. Of course, it's a lot more intense from here, but at least it lets you know whether you even want to continue on after you do this section. Once you get to the top of the first section, you'll be at a good viewpoint that lets you look down into the canyon and up towards Angel's Landing. So this area is called Decision Point, because right here you have to decide whether you want to climb up that crazy freaking thing or not. To get to the top of Angel's Landing from here, it's only a few hundred feet of elevation gain. I brought my little 360 camera with a selfie stick because I thought it would help to show you what the trail looked like from above. These 360 shots make it look worse than it is, but it does give you a good understanding of how narrow the trail can be. The trail is incredibly steep with many sections where you have to almost scramble to get up. Plus there are a few areas that are very narrow with massive drops on the side. Chains have been installed a lot of places along the route which make it very helpful as you're trying to pull yourself up towards the summit. That is a long drop down. During the busy summer weekends, this trail can be especially dangerous as there's so many people that are trying to get to the top at once. That's why they're instituting the permit system which will cut back on the amount of people that can enter this section of the trail. I don't love heights like this and for me the worst section is about three-fourths of the way up. It just continues to get more narrow here and the drops just continue to get crazier, especially looking back the way that you've already came. This was my second time doing the trail and it was pretty scary the first time I did it. That being said, the second time was also pretty scary as well. Eventually you'll finish the last portion and reach the summit plateau. We made it to the end of the chain section. Now all that's left is walking across to the summit. Once you make it to the top area, it's actually funny how wide it feels up there after what you've just accomplished. As you walk across the official summit, there's lots of places where you can sit and just soak in the views and have a snack.
There's the parking lot right there. Here, all the way up here. The views from here are absolutely incredible, making all of the work that you did to get here worth it. Do remember though, you have to go down, which is pretty crazy as you're descending the spine. You can see that is where Pops is at. All that's left is making it down the crazy chain section, again without falling. <laughs> That's it for our hike up Angel's Landing. Hopefully you enjoyed hiking it with me. Let me know what you think in the comments, and here's some shots of the descent before the video fades out. <laughs>